Hello, Five Minute Friday number four, and today we're going to look at limits and fits. So we're all familiar with a clearance fit and interference fit, but what if we need a sliding fit or a medium drive fit? Now, my medium drive could be different to your medium drive, so we need a standard and repeatable way of uh, making these fits. So we use the ISO limits and fit system. So in this video, we're going to have a look at using reamers and turn some precise diameters to create those fits and get that satisfying pop sound that you get with a good fit. So what we want to do is create a clearance fit, a transition fit and an interference fit. And we're going to use this chart to interpret the exact size of the hole which we'll create by drilling and reaming and the exact size of the shaft which we will create by turning on the lathe. So the first thing to realize is that wherever we see a capital letter that represents the hole and the lowercase letter represents the shaft so an H11 D10 fit would be an H11 reamed hole with a D10 machined shaft so to understand what that means and what type of fit we exactly want we need to have a look at a table and in this video we are going to create a sliding fit which is defined by H7 G6 a locational transition fit, which is H7K6, and a medium drive fit, which is H7S6. So we've already taken some of the ambiguity out of the terms like medium drive and put some numbers and some tolerances on it. So we now need to understand how to interpret this chart in order to achieve these fits. So in order to understand this chart, what we need to do is take a look at a cross section of a hole. So this is a cross section through a plate with a, a, a shaft which is going to interfere with this hole. So if this shaft is, is larger, so here, then we're going to have an interference fit. And in its current state it's smaller, so there's a gap here. So it's a clearance fit and anywhere in between is going to be a transition. So how does this relate to the chart behind? So if we turn this through 90 degrees, then what we can see is the edge of the hole here and the edge of the shaft. Let's have a quick look at the chart. We've got the edge of the hole and the edge of the shaft. So here there's a gap. So it's a clearance fit. The clearance is getting smaller and smaller until it's on size. And then it's moving into transition fits where the edge of the shaft is starting to interfere with the edge of the hole. And the interference fits are very much the, the shaft is, is somewhat bigger than the hole here. So I'll turn on picture of the hole again. And we can compare this chart. And we can see here, this is sort of this... Um, arrangement so we've got a gap in this section so it's a clearance fit so back to our table and we'll do one example and then you'll be able to um, hopefully work out what's going on so the H7K6 fit for our 10 mil shaft let's have a look at the chart H7K6 so the H7 is, is probably the easiest to create because you will actually buy an H7 reamer. And for 10 mil, the H7 reamer will allow you to go 0 to 18 micrometers over size. So what exactly is a micrometer? Well, it's relatively simple. All we'll do is 0 0.018, so 18 hundredths, or 0.018. 1.8 millimeters above size and we'll be able to do that via just using the H7 reamer. The shafts are a little trickier so our transition fit was uh, K6 for the shaft size and it's 10 mil at K6. Let's have a look there then. 10 mil K6 we're going to be needing to machine the shaft at 10 millimeters with a maximum allowable upper tolerance of 0.01 and a maximum lower tolerance of 
0.01. So anything within that range is going to be fine. And if we do, in fact, create the K6 and the H7, then we will have created our transitional fit. So first we'll create the shaft, and this is the setup we use on the lathe. We've centre drilled and use a revolving centre so that we've got it as concentric as possible and well supported for the cuts. Uh, rather than use a 3 jaw chuck, which might have a little bit of run out, we've used a collet chuck system. And just taking care of the basics, like um, making sure the tool is at centre height, for example. From there, um, we've set our datums, and we've used the Accurite uh, DRO system here. Measured using the micrometer, put an accurate um, datum size in, and then taken cuts from there and, and measured as we've gone along. And that way we've been able to ensure real strict adherence to those, uh, those rather strict tolerance standards we identified in the chart. As for creating the holes, that's a bit more of a simple job. Um, we're going to drill three holes in this piece of plate. We're going to drill out using a centre drill so it doesn't wander, a transitional drill, and then a 9.5 drill for the 10mm hole that we can open out for the 10mm H7 reamer. We generally um, drill 0.5 under for, um, for an H7 hole. So next, um, I've just marked it out using a vernier height gauge to find the centre in an angle plate. Mark the centre, and then this is quite interesting. We've um, Use an optical punch here, which just is an unnecessary stage for this kind of uh, sample job, but good practice. Um, here's a view of what it looks like through the optical um, centre. Just takes any sort of variance out of the process. We can line it up exactly and give it a good solid tap to find our centre. From there, um, we will line the thing up on parallels, centre drill, uh, open it up, and eventually get it to 9.5 millimetres where we can ream. Now the reaming is basically done at half the speed, so we drilled at 1000 RPM, we're going to ream at 500 RPM, and we're going to go at roughly twice the feed, and that's the general rule for reamers. Twice the feed and half the speed. And essentially we then repeated the process three times uh, for our three holes. Notice that we've used plenty of cutting paste just to keep it nice and cool and prevent any expansion in the reamer. When we repeated that three times, uh, we then cut to length using a bandsaw, plenty of coolant because we're using steel. And the next stage will be to replace the permanent marker marks with some more permanent stamps. So three holes, three tolerances, um, clearance slide, transitional K6, S6 for the medium drive fit. We'll try our clearance first. That's a slide that should drop in. Which it does, that's a slide fit, nice. Transition should require a bit of effort there, and that's a nice snug fit. And the final one is our drive, which well, is going to need a bit of a tap. In fact, it's still not there, so we need to just take it home. And there we've come through level at the end of the shaft. So, and that, oh, that is very tight indeed. I think that will probably need punching out from the other side. So there we have it. We've covered all three different types of fits, clearance, transitional, and interference. But there's one other important fit that we haven't covered, which is a throw fit. Something that's so big that you can chuck it in from the other end of the workshop. And there's another reason why it's called a throw fit, because if it's that big, you generally have to throw it away.